Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf, and I'm here with Terry McBride. Hi, Missy. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> We've been laughing already, you guys, so don't mind us if we just go off on the side a little bit. You'll just catch up later. Um, so, no, we're here about your new, your new EP. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Hotels and Highways. Got that new EP I got it right, there. didn't I? Yes, I did. No, we love it, and we. Lo I was listening to your, your title track on the way here. I absolutely love it, and I want to hear it on the radio like every day. It needs to be on every station. It's an amazing song. Well, thank you so much. We got to get you to own a couple stations, right? I something. do. I need to. Yes. <laughs> well, fortunately, some people are, are are feeling the same way and helping and playing, and it's been absolutely. cool. And yeah, I, it's a song that kind of got this whole little EP going for mm -hmm. me. People ask, you know, how did you get started with this project? Well, it started with a song that I didn't have, you know. Right. Uh, I had some people encouraging me to do something, but I just didn't have the song. And uh, they, this song came about by me just writing a lot of songs like I've been doing for years and years. Mm -hmm. And uh, didn't know that it was for me until I went in to the studio and had to sing a scratch on it. The other co-writer wasn't able to make it. And so I just read off my laptop, you know, and didn't really think much about it. But the other co-writer that was there with me, he took it back and worked on it, tuned it. It was really bad, but it had a little something to it that was cool. Once he tuned it, it sounded, and they took it and their publisher immediately took it and played it for Kenny Chesney in the studio and said, just feel like you need to hear this song. So we thought we're off to a good start. He didn't, right. he didn't cut it, but we had cool people that we, you know, respect that were digging mm -hmm. it. And so we thought this is cool. So then I started working on it. I just thought it could be a good song for me. And uh, that's what got the whole ball rolling and, and became uh, part of the EP. Well, what I love about the song is the truth in it. Mm. And it, it just sounds so authentic. It's, it's great. And, and, I, and I love that. And you're obviously no stranger to writing hit songs. Well, you know. I've been fortunate to be involved in a couple <laughs> of interesting situations, yes, it's that have been, led to some really good things, for sure. It's been great to, oh. to see your work your catalog of work has been amazing you've written for so many wonderful people but for you to have this song i'm so glad you kept it on your ep i'm like thank you well, Kenny. for me thank you um i love that you're singing this song i love that you're keeping it now Aww. you know if somebody else cuts it down the line you know that's great for you too yeah it's, but but it's i love life. hearing this from you because you know it's true to who you are it's true to what you've done well i really appreciate that i mean that's what i was hoping and everybody i think tries to you know, accomplish when they start recording a project. I mean, for me, I had about a 20 year break to think about it, you know, so, uh, and no real pressure to complete it. Although once we got into it, people did want me to try to wrap it up and do something with it. Right. But uh, it's interesting. I'm just getting started. I can tell, mm -hmm. you know, after all these years, I'm just kind of, I have no limits or boundaries to what I can do. So I want to experiment with that a little bit, you know, and moving forward with another uh, project down the road. But, uh, the cool thing is we got a lot of people's attention already with mm -hmm. this little thing and uh, some cool dates have come from it. I was talking earlier, we were discussing, but I just got back from Austin, Texas. I went down and did a, uh, uh, was part of the benefit for Guy mm -hmm. Clark and it was a fantastic event at a wonderful theater, the Paramount and um, just things like that that I wouldn't have done a year ago because I wasn't out doing it, you know, so right. that alone has been worth it. For having the EP, people knowing that I'm alive <laughs> and well. So live and well, you guys. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're awesome, and I love that. Oh. And I love that you were actually a part of a you know a good cause, you know, doing benefit shows. I, I, I think yeah. it's important, and I think that everybody in your position needs to do that. You know, maybe not all right. the time, but at least get involved at, at some point and help oh, it felt good. out. You know, yeah, it felt good. It was good. It was a good cause. You're right, and the people there, it was. I mean, not only was the lineup fantastic, but yeah, it was a fantastic cause. And for me. I grew up in Texas, so Guy Clark was a special, you know, figure before I ever met him. Oh my gosh, he wrote a couple of songs I just loved in high school, and mm -hmm. more than a couple. But Jerry Jeff Walker was cutting these songs, and I just I loved it. And then if you were a fan of Jerry Jeff, you became a fan of Guy Clark when he realized he was writing some of those songs. But uh, it was fantastic, and it was my first co-write in Nashville. When I signed with MCA, they started, here's what we're going to do. We're going to help you with your career. and We're going to mm -hmm. book you with some people. Right. And they put me my very first co-write. I came up from Texas, and I wrote with Guy Clark. And it was so, oh, I was a nervous wreck. Mm -hmm. You know, it meant so much to me. I wanted to be cool and accepted. And oh, had eight ideas, a couple good ones, three or four bad ones. And, <laughs> and anyway, it was, it, was, it was really cool. I mean, he, he kind of made me feel welcome. After I left there that day, I went, you know, 
I just hung out with Guy Clark, and I, I think I could. Uh, it gave me a lot of confidence that he didn't even realize he gave me, you know. But absolutely, yeah, it was it was interesting, a great experience for sure. That's awesome, and I love that you have that too. And mm -hmm. you know, the the fact that you get nervous or you were nervous <laughs> at that point, because you know it's true though. Every, you know, I think fans take for granted. You know, you're a human being, and there's somebody you're a fan of. There's oh, somebody you admire. So intimidating, and you know, yes. you have the same feelings that the rest of us have. And, oh, and I didn't have a lot of confidence then either. I was kind of new to town. I had a deal which kind of made a guy like Guy Clark want to write with me. You know, he, he didn't need me to help him write a song, but he was right. willing to help me because I had a deal. That's he's a songwriter trying to make a living too, and and I'm sure they thought because I was from Texas, we'll hit it off, and I'm right. glad they did it. Yeah, because it led to more meetings and getting to know him a little better. And mm -hmm. always intimidated by him, I I never wrote any landmark tune with him. I think I was just uh, it was tough, you know. But I sure enjoyed the time I got to spend with him, and That's took some other, a couple other young artists, a friend of mine, Jed Hughes, over and introduced him to Guy, and they became pals. So I was kind of glad I was able to facilitate yeah. that in some way because I know Guy really got a kick out of him, and it was cool. Fun. That's exciting, and you know I think it's fun too to look back where one moment you you trace back all of these events that stem from one moment, right? And that, that's really just kind of a neat thing. We do it all the time here at the magazine. We're like, if we hadn't met that one person in that right. one bar, yeah. we wouldn't be here tonight because this stemmed from that. And so, well, this business is all about that. You know that. Yeah, the I mean, networking is at what are, whatever level you're at, young kids coming mm -hmm. to town, it's a networking uh, situation here. People ask me all the time, how do I get started? It's like, man, you know, if you're going to come here, you just got to get out and be willing to do anything and everything. You got to meet people you never know. Yep. who, And if you've got some talent... Then you might really start meeting the right people. Exactly. That's the key to it. Exactly. <laughs> Definitely down. meeting the right people. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Without it, you can waste a lot of years. I've you seen can, it happen yeah. to some decent, talented people. They've hooked up with the wrong people yes. and wasted a lot of time, bogged down in deals mm -hmm. that didn't happen and never did. And oh, right. I'm lucky. I'm fortunate. I didn't come here until my late twenties. I was almost thirty mm -hmm. before I got signed. But uh, in a way, it was great because I was out trying to be a good musician and mm -hmm. I was getting experience. And uh, by the time I got here, I was serious about it. You know, any prior to that, I don't know if I would have handled it or been able to accept it as easily. Or... You know, what? I hear that a lot, too. Um, I mean, I, I've heard Wade Hayes talk about that, too, mm. with, with certain things. If they would have happened when he was younger, right? it maybe wouldn't have gone so well because of his maturity at that time. Or You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I hear it from Absolutely. so many different artists that... That always say, you know what, they're happy that it happened when it did, because if it had happened when they were younger, they yeah. may not have held on to it as well. Oh, it would not did. have gone well for me. I mean, I was, uh, during my artist days, I was sober too, so there wasn't a lot of problems being created by me, which wasn't always the case earlier on, you right. know. I mean, I was I was getting out there, touring and having fun, and, uh, and then finally, I, something clicked inside of me, whatever it was, some small part of my brain, and I... Got off the road, I was playing with this cool artist, Delbert McClinton, and I uh, got sober and went on this fast for 10 days, oh. lost 15 pounds. I drastically tried to do something, but I wanted to focus on my writing, and I did, and went straight from that to uh, auditioning for a guy named Bill Carter. He had a band called Bill Carter and the Blame, and he and his wife, Ruth Ellsworth, were writing cool songs for Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh. Crossfire, yeah. Willie the Wimp, Fabulous Thunderbirds, and Bill was getting ready to go out and tour with Stevie Ray Vaughan, and... I auditioned for the band and got the got the gig and bass player. So off we went, opening yeah. for Stevie, all the way up to New York and back. And uh, but during that run, I played my little home demos for Bill, and he loved it. He loved my voice and how country mm -hmm. it was. And they became the first fans of mine and mm -hmm. and professional writers that took me in and right. kind of helped me craft and build my little sound, whatever it was. And we started making trips up here, and that's how I got signed to MCA through those guys. I love that. I love hearing those stories. And I have to tell you, you have great hair. And you've always got great hair. And I was, hey. I was surfing through all of your pictures, and I'm like, did you ever have a bad hair day? I, uh, ever? I, I hadn't even thought about it right now. Now I am thinking about no, it. Oh, your no, your hair is great. It's well, great. Well, I still have most of it, so I, 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 that's encouraging I just, anyway. You know. Well, thanks. <laughs> I was like, that was one of the things that stood out to me in all of the, the pictures, because you have the one of the 
happiest smiles in all of the pictures. <laughs> that, you have so many pictures with you and you know other artists. And oh, every single one. I'm like, oh my god. A big gosh, smile. He's so happy, but his hair is perfect. Oh dang, that's good to hear because you know really I'm concerned about that. It, uh, I'm still searching for my look. I've mean, been well into my fifties and. Still looking, but I like this cleaner look I love now. It. I oh, think thanks. It's, great. it's think less it's great. fuss. I've had the beard. Mm -hmm. I looked like I had the Jesus thing going a couple years ago. I was heavier. I've been through everything, but I appreciate that. I posted a uh, a video from '91 mm -hmm. this week, uh, McBride and the Ride song, same old story. And uh, wow, the hair—it's unbelievable. The mane, I mean, the mullets, I, I called it Music Monday, but I said it should be Mullet Monday. <laughs> right. Because, I mean, and I've got hairspray. It's like if I shake my hair, it all goes in one big piece. <laughs> it's so bad, but still I post it because it if I can't laugh at it, I mean, who can? I mean, well, really. the thing is, is how many people had that same kind oh of thing my going, gosh. right? I mean, it was... Hey, my grandmother was a beautician, so I really, I came by it honestly. I, I, yep. I would... After school, I'd go hang out in her little salon, her and Teeny, this woman that ran it. Teeny and my grandma's name was Aileen, but uh, oh, wow. it was that crazy perm smell that's so strong. I mean, I know she had breathing problems towards the uh -huh. end, but as a child, it was shocking. Yes. Those, all these older women in there with these perm, that perm smell, your eyes are watering. and. <laughs> And they had a Frankenstein electric thing that they would. Yes, oh, yes, remember yes, those old ones yes. that looked like tentacles hanging down? It was in a room. It was frightening. Oh, yeah, it was all oh, just surreal. But final net and Aquanet to be damned. I was going to ask you if it was Aquanet. Because yeah, probably Aquanet in that day. Those I, days. You know, in, in the nineties, I know. I know people that still use Aquanet. Carissa Nicole, I'm oh, calling you out. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know. I'd like to have some just for the nostalgic. I still use Rave. Oh, right. Right, you can make a hold. Yep. I, you know, I can't believe I'm talking hairspray with you. But oh, that's that's crazy. You know, well, with hair like that, it, it it it's crazy to try to maintain that. You know, with what we were doing, yeah. you know, that it looked good at times. It's like you you have it looking like you think you wanted. Then I remember we went out to the desert and shot this video called "Hurry Sundown," and we traveled all day in a worn out Winnebago. You know, the glamour of, of the business behind the right. scenes. We fly across the country from a fair date. They pick us up in a worn out Winnebago. Boom, 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 boom. All the way there, you can feel every bump. <laughs> and we're bouncing like, man, they, uh, 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 trying to talk, you know, going, what are we? <laughs> out to Palm Springs, I guess. You know, one of those yeah. late bed, dry bed. And there I am, my hair, it's perfect. <laughs> and the wind isn't blowing. They brought in a chain link fence. I'm staring through the chain link fence on the lake bed, dry lake bed. It's so crazy. Then we get back in the Winnebago, boom, 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 boom from miles over to Malibu. Oh, now wow. the wind is blowing about 80. My <laughs> hair is everywhere. And no telling what we've spent on this video, you know. And at the end, all you can see is my hair is just being beat to death. It looks like, oh, that's all some people remember from the videos, how bad my hair looked. You know what, though? That's like, what a great memory. Great well, thanks. You, you made me feel better about my hair all of a sudden because that's what I remember the bad hair days well it just it, you know your hair reminded me a lot of brian white's hair and oh, i kind of got that the little... same kind of thing going for oh, a while uh, and, and now he's more clean cut like you oh is he really yes and and so well, anyways i just i had to go there well, that's fine and your description reminded me of the movie hairspray because it really one of their songs oh yeah you spray it and lock it you could take off in a rocket and then yeah. the hair stays stays in place and i'm just like Picturing that, right? I yeah, just, it was, that had to have been amazing. Well, that 90s thing, I mean, if you look around, not only pop mm -hmm. and, and rock, but country was starting to right. you know, evolve and, you know, we were just kind of becoming, we were really kind of a hair band, yeah. you know. Billy Thomas had a huge head of hair. Ray Herndon was the guitar player. He had the, you know, we all had the same kind of look. And so did everybody else. It was right. just part of it. I mean, mm -hmm. People remember, that weren't musicians did. I, I remember mean, doing. Oh, and you, you're right. It wasn't yeah. just about the music business. No, it was a it was real everybody. look. Oh, some guys are sad today. The mullet is gone. I I, I got comments on my picture <laughs> yesterday. I mean, the video. Like, man, I, I really. My wife doesn't like it, but I think the mullet's not bad. I was going, oh my god. I was going to tell you, there's people that are trying to make it a comeback right now. Are they like, really? Yes. I can see it happening. Yes. The Joe Dirt or whatever that whole vibe thing could do. Joe back. Dirt. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Make it fun. Um, oh my gosh. Hey, I, I saw it up close. We were talking about I did this thing with Billy Ray Cyrus at mm -hmm. the very peak of his achy breaky oh, yes. heartness, you know? And we went down to Stone Mountain, Georgia, you know where mm -hmm. that's at? Mm -hmm. 
we were the headliner. We had the big hit, Sacred Ground, and the uh, right. station was just killing it down there for us. Well, Billy Ray was the opening act. So in the meantime, as the date's getting closer, his song is blowing up to 14 million, whatever it ended up being, you know. So we get there, they had almost 90,000 people there that day. They weren't expecting expecting a good crowd, you know. Right. And about 89,000 of them were there to see Billy Ray Cyrus, unfortunately for us. So they come on the bus and go, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You know, do we want to let Billy Ray open? And of course, the crowd's out there chatting Billy Ray already. It's in the middle of the afternoon. I went, oh my God. I mean, we went on and we decided to open for him. But uh, and we got a great response. We had hits. You know, the guys were like, man, go out there and kill him. You got hits. But it was so weird because it was just the excitement level over him, him and that... Uh, song at that particular time it was unbelievable that that song i mean that was everywhere i remember him on talk shows oh my I remember, gosh like I, that I, I just remember so many i mean that song exploded it, it had its own dance it just yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was unbelievable yeah, it was and crazy. just a over-the-top nice guy i mean it ended up yeah. doing some other shows with him later but yeah that 90s thing it was just crazy i mean yeah. that's going back to the yeah. mullet of course but i know and you know what though the 90s we had i mean that's honestly for a lot of us and the, a lot of the true country fans a lot of fans of the magazine that's where they're still at they oh, cool. love the 90s music and yeah and that's another reason why i love your new song too because it's just it's the good country music that we all love and we crave every day uh -huh. and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the bro country or anything like that, but no, I hear there you. are so many of us that that's just where our heart is and that's yeah. what we want to hear. And I, I do feel like there's so many artists that jumped on that bandwagon because it's what the trend was instead right. of st staying true to themselves. So right. seeing seeing you stay true to who you are and your art, I just love that. I think it's well, great. Well, thanks. Yeah, I hope to continue to sort of find my way as mm -hmm. I, I continue recording. And, but that's me. I mean, I'm a country singer. If mm -hmm. you've heard my voice, it's still yep. kind of like the guy that sang on those records years ago. But uh, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's. I mean, that, that's what still excites me and gets me going as far as music. Chasing trends and things, it's not going to work for me ever. Even as a writer, it's just a little, it's strange. I mean, I know what's happening the last few years, and it's really not what I do, although I've still managed to have gotten some cuts and a mm -hmm. couple great things have happened along the way. But uh, I just have to be, like you say, being true to yourself and right. what I do. As a singer, for me, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to taking this country thing even a little further on the next batch. Not that it's going to be retro, really, but right. I just love it, you know, whether Absolutely. it's Gene Watson or whatever. Right. I think about these guys that are still out there. I know. These country guys. Gene Watson's still killing it. Yeah. Somebody just saw him here in town and said, he said he was sick, and they said it was killer. You know, I mean, That's crazy. farewell party, I'm done after that. I mean, I just, you know, if you're not a fan of that kind of stuff, you just don't know, you know. Right. I mean, I, I remember... How this is what I love about country music, really. You break it down in the simplest form of like he stopped loving her today. So I was telling my daughters, if you never heard he stopped loving her today, one's 20, the other's 15. So I said, You've never heard it. You've never heard, you know, I couldn't believe it. Shocked, you know, they listened to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So I pulled up the video, just the audio of it. By the end of it, they were completely overcome right? with emotion, they were not expecting right? it. They were following the story and hanging on to every word, and they couldn't believe it. And I went, that's it. That's exactly. why you're a fan of of a certain type of something right. that speaks to you, and it just doesn't get any better than that, right. you know? And and the stories in country music, they just it just doesn't get any better, in my yeah. opinion, you know? That's what really separates us from everything else. And, you know, it's always going to come and go, and I right. like that, too. There's some cool Change stuff. Change is always going to happen. Yeah, some stuff that's, that's come along already mm -hmm. that's... Cool. You know, it's a cool thing like with John Party right now. He's a country guy, but he's kind of a current guy too. Mm -hmm. So they've been able to mesh that together and it's like people love it. And I can see why. Yeah. It's really cool. I mean, I know his uh, producer, Bart, is a good pal of mine and we write quite a bit. But uh, And my friend Bryce Long writes, uh, got the next single for John Party actually. But that's a cool oh, thing that's going on yeah. there. It's a country guy. Yeah. You know, Definitely. it's interesting. But yeah, there's room for all kinds of stuff. and. There, there is. Music, I mean, people always searching for the next whatever, and I get it, you know? Absolutely, and that's why I'm so excited to share your music with everybody, you know, your new stuff, because it's just, it is great, and everybody needs to hear it. And well, thank you so if much. I, if I had a ton of radio stations, I would play it on every single one. Um, <laughs> hey, so, this will so help. So you guys who have radio stations, play, play it. 
Hotels and highways. Come on, it won't hurt you a bit, I promise. Absolutely. Feels good. Come yeah, on. Yeah, it does. But is there anything else you want to tell everybody? I know I've been taking up all of your time. No, you haven't. No, I love I, it. I, we spent probably too much time on my hair, but no, that's all no, right. No, no, no. I think hair is. <laughs> but I went important. with you. It's my own fault. <laughs> I, I went right down that trail. With I know. You. I'm so sorry, but I was like, I can't do this interview without mentioning it because it just was perfect. And now, I mean, for me, it's just more. Uh, Focusing on what's going to happen next. Right. I mean, yeah. personally, I'm getting ready to shoot a video for Hotels and Highways. Right. I want to do something kind of cool and dramatic. Got a young guy that I've been working with that does all my photography, and okay. he's also a videographer, a little film guy. You know, he's got a, the man bun thing happening. He's got that look going on. I but love uh, the man bun. yeah, <laughs> he's a great guy and really talented. Mm -hmm. He put a little EPK thing together for me that was really cool. We used some old footage from back in the day on the road oh, and yeah. some cool stuff and. People really reacted and responded to it. And, but yeah, just things like that. We're, we're focusing. Uh, I am you know, getting ready to hit the road and do a few dates, which is really mm. new and different for yeah. me. And next year, definitely going to hit it pretty hard and see what we can create and come up with. And try to find you know, just those places of people who want to you know, hear what I'm doing, those people that are interested, right. stations that are playing it. We're just kind of building... Even if it's regional or whatever, you know, we're just Absolutely. kind of going where the music's taking us at this point. Absolutely. Well, you know, and I think that's the best plan too, yeah. right? I mean, let it, let it come and let it happen and just yeah. enjoy the ride the entire time. It is. I mean, I'm still a songwriter. I, I, nothing's really changed, but uh, like we were talking earlier, I do kind of like the uh, spending a little bit of time, different uh, energy on, you know, this project, and right. it's been cool. I mean, it's all part of what I do, but. So far, I've enjoyed all of it. All right. Well, fans can find you online and social media, right? Absolutely. Uh, Terry McBride Music on almost everything, Facebook and Instagram. The Terry McBride on Twitter. And you know that we put links up, so there's no excuses. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, you can find me. Right, absolutely. My, my website. Yeah, I'd love for people to go on there and check it out. Some cool photos on there. and. Some little right. interesting tidbits. I'm going to put this up for you guys oh, dude, to see put again. That out a little more Hotels time. and highways. Go out, get it, order it, do whatever you got to do. But you have to get this played on your radio station. So call and request <laughs> it too. So, all right, guys. Well, stay tuned for more from Terry. And until next time, see ya. See ya.